Hey, this is Mike. Thank you so much for choosing this video. Today I'm in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, visiting Sparks Toyota. And I'm checking out a 2018 Toyota Camry in the XLE V6 trim level. Now this vehicle gives you a 301 horsepower V6 with the same fuel economy as the four cylinder in the previous generation. Absolutely fantastic, it has a lot of features to show off, so let's go ahead and check it out. This Camry is sitting on 235-45 hand-cooked tires wrapped around 18-inch alloy wheels with a portion of it painted silver and the rest with the alloy shining through there. It also has four-wheel disc brakes with ventilated disc rotors in the front and solid disc rotors in the back. The name of this color is Galactic Aqua Mica. And as soon as I brought this vehicle out in the sun, it really impressed me. So when there's the sun's not really shining on it, like in a low light or in a garage or something, it doesn't, it's hard to appreciate the color. You might even mistake it as a black, color, uh, black car or something like that. But as soon as the sun shines on it, it really comes to life. It's like a dark green aqua, color that just looks fantastic hopefully you'll be able to see one of these in person and hopefully also the camera is doing it justice right now but it is a really impressive color okay so looking at the front end it has the parking sensors across the front that are visible these little circles here here you can see them all the way here on the ends as well but it also has some hidden sensors so you have some, a sensor here in the uh, behind the rear view mirror, kind of zoom in for you. This has the lane departure assist, but it also has the radar cruise control. And the sensor for that is cleverly hidden behind the emblem here. So you notice the emblem doesn't contour with the rest of this portion of the, hood, the, uh, the front here. So it has a little bit different angle. It's more facing forward in front of the vehicle because behind this emblem is a sensor. And I'm actually gonna show it to you when we lift the hood later on and show you the back of this. You can see this is a sensor and it's plugged in. And so that's not only a, an emblem, but also a radar sensor for your cruise control. Now the headlights, actually all this vehicle, all the exterior lighting on this vehicle is powered by LEDs. So there's LEDs here in the front for your turn signals. You also have an LED strip for your daytime running light and as an accent. And the projector tube has your low and your high beams, both out of the same projector tube. This is what the key looks like. It's a proximity key system designed to where you can just keep it in your pocket and you don't have to take it out. You just use the vehicle 100% while keeping this key in your pocket. It does have some useful buttons though, the lock and unlock, the ability to open up the trunk or unlock the trunk, and then you also have the panic button here. Now you notice it has a little bit of a uh, little bumps here on the lock button so that way you can find it even in the dark or just you know without even looking at it, you can find that lock button and go ahead and lock your vehicle if you wanna use that but there's another way to lock your vehicle as well. As long as you have the key with you, it could be in your pocket, it can be in a bag, whatever. As long as it's within a close proximity of this door, you can lock the door by placing your finger over this little sensor right here. You see the little marks in the door handle? You just place your finger there, it senses your finger position, it senses your hand, your uh, key within a close proximity of this door, and it will lock the doors. To enter the vehicle or unlock the car, you simply put your hand behind the handle. And once again, it senses your hand position in that place and senses the key within a close proximity and allows you access to the vehicle. Okay, so let's look at the profile of the Camry V6. So you'll notice really nice classy wheels. They're not, they just really look um, classy. They don't look, you know, kind of tacky or anything like that. They kind of blend with the vehicle well. Also, you have a very strong line. I don't know if you can see that right in here on the side, that crease kind of dividing up the vehicle a little bit and giving a little bit of style. And then all around the windows, you have the chrome accent 
completely enclosed. And then you have the center portion, these pillar, this pillar right here is blacked out in a gloss black. So that way it kind of, you know, makes the car a little bit sleeker. It doesn't chop it up as far as the, visually. It just makes it look like a longer, sleeker, lower vehicle. Okay, so here's the inside of the passenger side door. Now, one thing I notice, everything around your arm, here, here, all the way up to here is all soft to the touch surfaces. There's no hard plastics until you get down in this area. And then the handle itself is a metallic, but then it has this metallic accent extending through, kind of giving it um, some, some more length and, and it just visually blending in the door handle, which looks nice. Little bit of stitching here in the door, and then you have your bottle holder at a slant. It's easy to get to, a little bit of storage space here. But right here, this little extra space would be a perfect place, I think, um, to set your cell phone. And it's in a more forward position, so it's easier to access. Okay, so here's your threshold with a plastic sill plate. And check out these seats. But one of the cool things about the seat here is it's powered, but not only is it powered here at the bottom, you can raise and lower the seat here on the passenger side as well as tilt it. So you can tilt it forward and back. You go forward, go forward and back, and you can raise it up and down, similar to like a dentist chair. But this is a feature uh, that was not available before on the passenger side as far as raising, lowering, and tilting the seat. So that's fantastic. Okay, so you have the leather trim seats with the perforations there in the center portion and the smooth, you know, stereotypical leather texturing here on the ends. And that diamond pattern looks fantastic. It's like a quilted look. And then you have this little strip right here in the center looking pretty neat. And check out the headrest, nice and contoured. Now these are heated seats, by the way. It has a three-stage heated seat control there, which I'll show you later on. And look at all the legroom you have. I'm gonna leave all of these specs as far as the measurements, the you know the legroom, the headroom, all that stuff is going to be in the description, but just visually check it out. Very, very little tapering down in here. It's just wide as can be, and with the seat all the way back, let me make sure it's all the way back. No, it even has more room, wow. And then you have a soft to the touch dash up here as well as here. Let's take a look at the glove compartment. It's a locking glove compartment. And you notice it's not just a typical glove compartment that goes down. It uh, is actually like a little shelf there that I think is a little bit more useful and easier to organize in my opinion. And you notice that little door in the back, that's where your cabin filter is. So when you change the cabin filter, um, it's pretty easy to get to, you just have to take out the stuff out of your glove compartment and check out this accent here this is kind of like a wood grain uh, accent there on the dash hopefully you'll be able to see it pretty good it's hard to sometimes there you go sometimes the camera it's hard to pick up little things little details like that with this bright sunlight but it really stands out especially that has that that concave styling and then a curving down with the dashboard. There's a lot of design cues in this vehicle that uh, really impressed me. And we'll check out that dual pane panoramic sunroof as well later on. From the side out exterior of the vehicle, it, uh, it's kind of hard to tell that it does have a sunroof because it kind of blends so well. Um, but just fills up the entire roof. Okay, so let's look at the inside of the back door. So you have that same styling uh, with the handle, kind of blending it in. You have soft to the touch here, 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 and then you have your hard plastics down in this area. It has the cup holders and a little storage space there. Nice big bolster here on the sides of the back seat, which is basically a bench seat, but it does have some you know, bolstering to kind of simulate a bucket seat. And it also has the uh, quilted perforated seats back here as well. Armrest with cup holders here in the center. You can move that out of the way in case you need a center passenger. It also has the 
latch system for car seats or isofix. Now you, you notice I put the front seat all the way back just to give you an idea that even when the seat's all the way back, you still have a decent amount of leg room. I mean, of course, the person in the front would have to be, you know, seven feet tall to have the, have to have the seat this far back. But just to give you an idea, and even the driver's seat is adjusted pretty far back, a little bit further back than I would need, and I'm six feet tall, and you still have a decent amount of leg room. Has a little bit of a hump here in the center portion, so uh, the center passenger will have to kind of deal with that, but overall not too bad. And then you have your uh, vents right here, and storage pockets on the back of both front, front seats. Okay, now transitioning to the back of the vehicle. It has a shark fin antenna right in the very center there, and LED third brake light in the middle of the glass there. And also this vehicle has a JBL sound system, and there's the subwoofer there. Some of the speakers in the subwoofer kind of integrated, I guess in a free air design, um, there in the divider between the trunk and the cabin space. All LED tail lights here in the rear. And there's a little vortex creators here. You'll see these on Toyotas and Lexus where it creates a sp spiral of air. Once the air passes these little things, you'll see them on the, on the front right in this area and also on the back. And it kind of helps with the aerodynamics. I'll leave a link. It's a little bit more advanced than I can probably explain as far as what it's intended to do. Okay, so the backup camera is right here in the very perfect center position, which is great. I always like it having, you know, having it right in the center so that way it's already gonna have a little bit of distortion since it's a wide angle view like a GoPro type camera, but having it in the center just makes it easier for me to you know, position everything in, re in relation to the vehicle as I'm backing up. It also has the parking sensors here in the back as well. And check it out, dual exhaust tips. Looking pretty nice. Allowing this vehicle to get push out at 301 horsepower, that's amazing. Okay, so opening up the trunk, of course you can use the key, but there's also a button here off to the right near this Y, a little bit past the Y I guess, right in here, just push that. There's the button right there. You also have a keyhole here on the left side. And there's your camera. But it lifts up pretty much by itself. And it goes quite a ways. You'll notice it kind of tilts back over the glass past the 90 degree angle, just to give you better access to the trunk and, and just, you know, not bumping your head, I guess. Okay, so check it out they try to push it out as far as they can here on the left right giving you as much space as possible you also have some tie downs for a net pocket here and here all across here now you're able to fold down the seats using these these handles, you just pull that one or that one. It's a 60-40 split. You can actually see right there where it splits and you can fold down one or the other to add to your cargo space while maintaining passenger space sometimes if you, that's what you need. Here's your speakers there on, or your subwoofer speaker, pretty good size. It looks like a eight or a 10 inch speaker, I guess. But you can fold these seats down and once you can actually fold both of them down and really add a huge amount of space to your cargo space when you need it when you don't have to have the passengers in the back seat all right so let's lift this up there's a little handle here you lift it up like so and has a little hook it's where you can hook it right there so it holds it up for you and under here is your tools for your spare tire as well as you know just a little bit of extra space for small things um, that you can put under here that you want to carry with you. And then this lifts up, not very heavy since it's made out of a, uh, a strong styrofoam. And underneath it, there's your spare tire. Fuel door is here on the driver's side and it's locking. So we can go ahead and unlock it. 
pops open and we have a pretty traditional cap with a tether system and a place to hang it while you're pumping gas. To start it up, as long as you have the key inside the vehicle, it can be in your pocket, a bag, or even in a cup holder where I just put it. Put your foot on the brake and hold it and push this button and it'll start right up. You don't have to hold the button, you just push it. Here's the floorboard in front of the driver's seat. Now you notice that the floor mats, the floor mat hooks in place so that way it keeps it straight and from sliding away from you. And there's your accelerator and brake pedal. And you notice that the accelerator pedal uh, pivots there at the bottom so that way it keeps things from sliding underneath the pedal. And then you have a footrest here on the left side. So let's go ahead and take a look under the hood. Opening the hood is very easy. There's a little latch, a little bit to the right of center. So here's your center line, a little bit to the right. And you just reach in, you can kind of do it like that. Either way, like so. Or you can go like that, either way. But it basically just goes up the rest of the way by itself as soon as you get it going. Has an insulated hood. And taking a look at the engine bay here. The firewall, I don't know if you can see back there, it is insulated back in here along the firewall. Also, you see this bar right here? It connects to the strut towers all the way across and stabilizes the, both the strut towers. And you also have a seal around the outside of the engine. So you have it here on the sides and then the, the front one is, is actually mounted on the hood. So when you close the hood, it seals up the engine compartment pretty good, helping with the airflow, you know, directing the airflow um, underneath the vehicle. Also, it keeps the noise down, things like that. There's your battery. Okay, so, so this vehicle, it has a 3.5 liter V6 with 301 horsepower and 267 pound-feet of torque paired to an eight-speed automatic transmission. And from what I understand, it has a zero to 60 time in like five and a half seconds. So it is unbelievably quick for a four-door sedan like this. And with the fuel economy is just, just amazing. So all around, excellent, excellent car. So right back here is the sensor <clears throat> behind the emblem. So that's for your, the sensor for your adaptive cruise control. Okay, inside of the driver's side doors, just like the other side, the kind of a mirror of the other side, except for, has a few more buttons. The power windows are automatic. All four windows are automatic. One touch down and one touch up. Very convenient. Now these windows have been tinted by the dealer. They don't come tinted uh, from the factory. Power door locks and then your side mirrors are adjusted here. You just turn it, pick a side, and then you can adjust it like a little joystick. Okay, so the driver's side seat is powered just like the passenger, except for, you notice, vehicles typically have a little bit of extra features for the driver. And in this case, it has the power lumbar adjustment in addition to the uh, heated power seat that goes up and down and everywhere. Okay, so right in here, there's a little storage pocket. So you can put some change or whatever. Your auto dim headlights are right here. Traction control off. Default is on, but you can turn it off if you need to spin tires for whatever reason. Ability to open up your trunk and then your locking fuel door. And check it out. You have a tilt and telescoping steering column and look at where the lever is. It's really easy to find. It's right there on the side. You can go up and down in and out and get it the position that you want and lock it in place. So this Camry has a heads up display here that shows you a digital speedometer, what gear you're in and also RPM gauge there. And it also there on the left side <clears throat> is the lane departure uh, alert system. So that way, if you get outside of your lane or something, it will give you an, an alert there right in the heads up display. You can adjust it on this screen, which we'll get to this screen in a minute. Okay, so let's look on the inside from the driver's seat. 
very impressive interior dash with the division here in that pattern really really nice just overall a pleasant vehicle to look at and enjoy driving okay so the leg room is fantastic I mean I'm six feet tall and I have the seat so far back that I can't even touch the pedals and the knee room is good I mean there's just a lot of available space here okay so let's look at the steering wheel so it's a leather wrap steering wheel with the stitching on the inside and it's soft to the touch comfortable it has a good thickness it's not digging into your hands too much it has a little bit of a, a bolster here on the top portion overall looking nice with that metallic accent on there okay so here on the right side is your cruise controls your cru cruise control settings and like I mentioned before, several times it has the adaptive cruise control. And so you can, once that's the cruise control is activated, then you can adjust your sensitivity of your radar system. So that way you can be closer or further away from vehicles in front of you using the adaptive cruise control. It also has the lane departure uh, assist button right here. So you can turn that on and and off it also has the ability to turn the steering wheel to get you back into your lane if you need to these buttons down here as well as these correspond to the radio so you have your volume voice recognition mode which is your audio source and then the, here's a change through uh, your audio tracks or your presets on your radio here on the left side you have your Bluetooth control for answering calls sending calls with your voice recognition. Uh, these buttons in this back button correspond with the screen between the gauges, which we'll get to in just a minute. So your windshield wiper controls are here on the right side. Your turn signal on the left side has your headlight controls. You actually have the ability to turn off your daytime running lights. You have automatic, parking light, and then there's your headlights. Okay, so looking at the gauges check it out i mean it has the bezels around the outside helping reduce glare it's kind of recessed in the dash so your eyes are not focused on something super close after transitioning from looking at a bright highway or even a nighttime highway but uh well done with the bright letters and uh, the bright numbers and everything rpm is there on the left side with your engine coolant temperature and on the right side is your speedometer that goes up to 160 look at that and of course fuel gauge which this vehicle is going straight to the gas station as soon as this as soon as i finish here and but right here in the center uh, we have this information screen which is able to amplify the information that you can find at on your screen and you can customize right here in front of you so right now it's showing the radar is ready the radar cruise control is ready the lane departure uh, assist is activated all these these features are activated um, and you're able to you know visually see what's going on on this particular screen you notice these little icons here on the left side this is part of a whole menu system it also has the digital speedometer there on the top right outside temperature how many miles you can drive all those things are right here in front of you as you're as you're driving around okay so looking at these icons let's go ahead and scroll down and it takes us to the next icon here which is your audio so right now the audio is off scrolling down again goes into your you know tire pressure scrolling to the right will give you the information as far as your uh, your system status your blind spot control your indicators are on the side mirrors right here little indicators right there but this has the blind spot monitor system it also has the radar cruise control and all the sensors so you can turn these features on and off depending on wh what you want um, it also has the the parking assist which is your parking sensors all those you can turn off so it's going to give you a, a list of what's activated and then a visual representation of what's activated as well then you can go back to your tire pressure scrolling down this is your uh, settings so you can set specifically different features and one of those features is the HUD so we can go into the heads-up display and we can turn it on and off if we hold down the button it goes into our settings and then we can change the brightness position um, and rotation and everything here on the HUD screen 
Now, one thing I want to mention, if you have polarized sunglasses, the HUD is, the, the brightness is diminished quite a bit. So, um, just to let you know, if you put your, if you're looking at, looking at it with your sunglasses on, some sunglasses, it will, you know, impede the, the, the ability to see the HUDs perfectly. All right, scrolling down, it goes to your stored messages. Scrolling down again, your eco indicator. So this will let, show you how far you can drive before the vehicle's empty, your range. But also as you drive, it'll give you a little indicator on how you're doing as far as your fuel economy. And then it goes back to the driving support. So this, these little icons right here, you can scroll up and down and go to the one that you want and get the information that you want. You don't have to go into all those features, but it's there in case you want to. Okay. I really like the blue backlit on the start button and all these buttons. Hopefully I'll be able to do a night video soon on this vehicle and check it out and see what it looks like. Okay, so your four-way flashers are here. It actually has a CD player, a 2018 model. For those of the pe those people keeping the 90s alive, they wanna use the CDs. Um, so it does have a CD player, has a traditional volume and tune through the station's knobs. Okay, but here's a touch screen and has physical buttons around the outside of the touch screen. So this right now is your home screen. So it's a split, you know, it's a split. It has your fuel economy, uh, your phone if it's paired, and then your audio if it's turned on. So that's your home screen right here. We can go to this next physical button here, or in the home screen, we can just simply tap the one we want to go to. So we can make selections either way. So let's go to this menu. So this gives you the different options. So specifically audio, phone, apps, info, or setup. So let's go to the apps. And this is where you can uh, set up your iHeartRadio, Pandora, and different features here. Let's see what we have. Still loading up. Now there's a whole app catalog in which you can choose apps to in your Intune system which right now I don't think, I think it has to be paired to a cell phone with the Intune app on your phone um, in order to do all these different features, which I probably don't have um, access to right now. So let's go back to the menu. Let's go to info. So we can see our, in, our vehicle alert history, but also our eco. So this is like a drive, you know, drive computer here, average speed, elapsed time, your range, and then what you've been doing for the last 15 minutes, how you've been driving and how much fuel economy you've been getting. Let's go to the audio. So you can have AM, FM, satellite radio, CD player, USB, Bluetooth, and then you, of course you have your Pandora and all that stuff that hasn't been set up yet and auxiliary input. So that way you can plug in just about anything and play it through the sound system. Vehicle alert, so there's no alerts. So like, a, you know, time to change the oil, that kind of thing. And then your phone and then direct access to your apps with the physical buttons there. Okay, so your climate control is just below the radio and you have your temperature for your driver, temperature for your passenger, which you can sync um, together if you want. So right now they're synced. If I want to unsync them, I can push this button or I could just simply start moving this knob and it will, it will change the temperature for the passenger. There's your fan speed, uh, where you want the air to blow, your air conditioning, recirculate the air, and also your front defroster and your rear defroster, which will also activate your heated side mirrors. Okay, so right in here, uh, this one has the USB and auxiliary inputs here on the left side, and then a 12 volt power supply there, and they're covered up so that way it keeps dust and everything from getting in there. It also has a, um, a wireless charger for your cell phone, so you can activate that. You simply place your phone, if it uh, has that feature, you can place your phone on this pad and it will charge the cell phone without having to plug it in or anything. So it has to have that capability, um, but you can use this if you don't have that feature on your phone or if you're just not using it in the moment, you can put things here. It's not going to harm anything. Nothing's gonna get shocked or there's nothing gonna happen. Um, it's, just, it's just there if you wanna use it. So it also has this little, just a little bit of a storage space right in here. Cup holders. Uh, now the cup holders have these little spacers to divide, you know, take up the slack for different size cups, but you notice it's completely open here in the center portion, all the way down uh, to allow access uh, or allow you to use this space for more than just cups. So it's a, 
you know, quite useful there when they do that. Okay, so here's your shifter. Let's go ahead and put it in reverse and check out the backup camera. So it has the active guidelines. So as I turn the steering wheel, it's going to uh, show me which direction, kind of a estimated trajectory of the vehicle as I'm backing up. But you notice it's a wide angle view, you know, from the bumper all the way to the sky and all the way around it has that wide angle view and it's right in the very center of the vehicle, which is fantastic. You can get even wider view by pushing that button and that way it just expands out as far as it possibly can. Um, you do have quite a bit of distortion there on the ends, but at least you have the visibility like really, really, even your blind spots and everything. You can also change your the way your lines look here by pushing that button. Continuing down, there's neutral. There's drive. That's your normal drive position. It's going to cycle through the eight gear ratios automatically. <clears throat> but if you want to put it in sport mode, you just move it here to the left and you can change to the gears manually by bumping it like a ratchet shifter. And you'll know what gear you're in because it'll show it right here in the center. At any time, you just go to the right, goes back in drive. You can just bump it back to the right. It'll take over shifting gears for you. So this vehicle has three different drive modes, eco, normal, and sport. So it's really a balance between eco and sport. Sport is, you know, more performance, less fuel economy. Eco is more fuel economy, a little bit less performance. And then the normal is kind of like a balance between the two. Here's your brake hold. So if you have this activated, when you come to a complete stop, um, like at a stop sign or, you know, traffic jam or whatever, it's going to hold your vehicle still until you push the accelerator. It also has an electronic parking brake. Now, right now it's set to engage when I put it in park. So as soon as I put it in park, not only the vehicle, the transmission is in park, but also the electronic parking brake is engaged, keeping the vehicle from rolling. If I want to disengage it, all I have to do is push and hold the brake and push down on it and it will disengage. You notice the indicator light went off. You can actually feel it in the pedal a little bit disengaging from the rear wheels. If I want to re-engage it or for whatever reason, uh, re-engage it even if I'm not in, in, uh, in park, I can simply, without even pushing the brake, just lift up on it and it will cinch down on the rear wheels. Here's your heated seat controls. It's a three stage, high, medium, and low, or off. Okay, so here's the armrest. It's a very soft and comfortable. It does bottom out after, after a little while, but it is nice and soft and comfortable. Smooth armrest, and it's big enough to share with your passenger, I think. It lifts up. So here's your storage compartment, and look at there, it has two uh, USB ports, 2.1 amp chargers. So this is not to play music through the sound system, this is just charging. And it has a, a felt lining, it's kind of like a pool table type felt in the bottom, which you can take out and clean and put it back in. Um, but in general, this is kind of like the junk drawer of the car, I guess. Okay, so the rear view mirror is an auto dim rear view mirror. And let's see if I can get it to auto dim by holding the light sensor, put my finger over the light sensor here. Yeah, there we go. It's kind of a little gradual, um, but you can see it's kind of tinting. It has a little bit of a green tint, reducing the glare. Now it also, um, it'll make a bigger difference as you're driving, depending on uh, the vehicles behind you and you know and all that stuff it's going to give you still good visibility uh, without being you know too bright at nighttime it also has your home link garage door opener controls right here integrated into the rearview mirror you can actually turn off the auto dim feature by pushing that button and then there's also a digital compass showing which way your vehicle is facing okay so right in here you have some tap lights for the driver, your passenger, little LEDs there, just kind of um, giving you some light without blinding everybody in the vehicle. You can turn on all the interior lights by pushing that button, or you can have them turn on with the door by having that one activated. Okay, so these buttons here are for your uh, sunroof, which we'll get to in just a minute. And then this button is an emergency button. This is for you know, connecting to emergency services. You notice it has a little cover uh, to keep people from accidentally pushing it. Okay, the visors. 
have little um, mirrors, but also the light that it turns on as you open them up. And there's a little shade that extends out the back, just in case you need to, you know, the sun is always <clears throat> peeking through somewhere. So this kind of helps out with that, especially on the side. Okay, so let's check out this awesome sunroof. It's huge, look at it. And you notice the cover covers and blocks 100% of the light. So there's no light shining through when the uh, the cover's in, engaged. Now we can go ahead and, and since this is a power cover, so some people have an issue trying to move this back, you know, with their arm or whatever, but since it's powered, you simply just push a button and it will go all the way back. And it's quite fast too compared to other ones. Now the back portion glass is fixed, the front portion is the one that moves. We can go ahead and bend it up, allowing a little bit of air to flow. Or we can open it up like so and get a lot of air. Alright, that's as far back as it goes, like so. Let's go back forward and close it up. And we can also close the shade. Okay, looking at the visibility in the back, let's take a look there. Um, so, lots of glass, the, the rear glass is a little bit obstructed by the headrest in the third, in the second row, but uh, overall, not too bad. I mean, you want, you want the headrest to be there to, um, you know, protect your head or whatever, but in general, you can see quite well, especially on the sides there, but of, you know, it has the camera system, the blind spot monitor system, the parking sensors, all kinds of things to help you avoid um, any mishaps from lack of visibility anyway. Okay, that about wraps it up, but I wanna show you, just kinda of show you this, and I'm gonna have links to this information in the description, but just to have it hard-coded in the video, here's the, uh, the L, the LE, and the XLE, and then here we are with the XLE V6. You notice it's a separate separate trim level and there's a listing of the features there and a little bit of a differentiator just in case anybody had any questions like hey what's the difference you know isn't this the same as the xle except for has a different engine well there's a little bit of a difference here so just to give you an idea of what the uh, difference you can use the pause button and read this if you want but um there's that and another thing is here's the whole se xsc and v6 you can check that out but just in case you doubted, you may think I was making up the name of the color, uh, it is the Galactic Aqua Mica. So there you go. In case you were thinking I'm just playing around with that name, there's the actual proof. So, and also has a whole hybrid, which we'll get to that. We'll get to that in another video, the whole hybrid thing. So anyways, thank you for watching. And thank you to Sparks Toyota here in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina for allowing me to show off another awesome vehicle. And I'll see you guys next time.